So if you're looking to make or create your portfolio for free and make it absolutely professional, well, you're in the right place. Because in this particular video, we're going to explain how to create your portfolio on Notion and put it on an actual production ready and professional website and like serve it on a production stuff. And here's Chrissy on Netfly and have it all customized. And you're actually going to be using Notion as a CMS or a content management system. So all the content is going to be held inside of Notion. You're going to use all the features of Notion from plugins to templates, emojis, everything that Notion basically allows you to do, you're going to use in that and you're going to convert it into an actual website using the magic of Next.js with React and a really awesome Notion starter kit or template. And we're going to use Netlify. You can use any other hosting, but Netlify will allow us to actually deploy that really, really well. And if we try to put those side by side, clearly you see they are absolutely identical. So everything we have from this side, we've got from the other side in here on Notion, everything is really well displayed with pages. Uh, you've got like some, you know, list in here going on really well in here, maybe like, uh, just refresh that to make it looks really good. So there you go. It's goes into the place, uh, the biography in here on Notion as well, the footer, the blog post that we've got and everything. So you, you can go to the blog post and you can enter it. You go multi-page where there's GIFs in here, uh, maybe code as well. That looks really well. So that works actually very awesome. And you got the dark mode actually works really well. This is actually the same dark mode that Notion uses as well. So you go back, it's pretty fast as you in here because it uses Next.js static site or incremental static site regeneration. So it uses all of that behind the scenes in a really, really well manner just to put it together. Um, other pages as well, they work absolutely fine together uh, with code, with, you know, details in here, images from in splash. So everything, literally everything, if you put it from like perspective to use Notion or what you see your Notion is going to be immediately reflected on what you see on your website. So you can immediately or exactly use Notion as a content management system. And you can, you know, hold all the data, all the stuff, all the text images on Notion, and just display it on your website is going to look absolutely professional. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So we're going to be using this Notion page and we're going to just like turn this from a Notion, regular Notion kind of page only sits on Notion. I'm going to take it into our website and how we can do that. Actually, we're going to be like exposing the actual Notion API. We're going to use React. We're going to use a lot of stuff and we're going to use Next.js to probably just do like this static site generation and to make the blog or the portfolio real, real quick, like just blazingly fast, which makes it super cool for users who are coming through your profile or portfolio. So that's what I'm going to be doing in here. And Notion is going to basically act as a backend and it's more likely it's going to act as a content management system or a CMS. And uh, you probably heard a lot about that, but never tried or never like knew how to implement this. Well, okay. So we're going to be actually implementing this in this particular video. And it's actually very, very easy. You don't need to go through like the details or the hardest parts you could go through the hardest part, but you don't need to, because we got this awesome template. It's called Next.js Notion Starter Kit uh, from this awesome guy in here. Thank you so much. So this, this template in here is basically batteries included template. What I mean by this is basically just gives you all that you need to start putting your Notion, um, like Notion pages into an actual website and deploying it to, for, for example, to Versal or to uh, Netfly, which you're gonna be using in this particular video. And it's gonna be so, so fast and blazingly good. And all the configuration behind the scenes, and it's gonna use Next.js, it's gonna use React, and uh, it's gonna use static site generation as well. Uh, you can use server side, but it's better to use static site for your portfolio or maybe a block too, you can use that. And yeah, it, it can basically like support multiple themes and you can support the dark one, which is just, just nuts to, you know, think about it. And there's so many other things into it, but this is, this is the part we're going to be needing. So first things first, to get started with this, you need to know exactly how this particularly works. So just take a quick glance of how this one works or how it operates. So if you take a look, 
This one uses two main libraries to do the magic behind the scenes. There's the React Notion X, and this library basically allows you to render Notion pages using React in a super, super fast way, and it's like seriously faster, 100x faster than Notion rendering time. So this gives you an absolutely beast rendering time and performance, um, like, you know, boost and all that, and it gives you a type screen react, so that's pretty good. So this basically what allow us to do is actually just export everything in Notion and just put it in your website. That's it. So all the features Notion has, uh, all the blocks, or the markdown, HTML, all the kind of styles and everything behind the scenes on Notion, this one will actually put it on React and allow you to render it. And of course, as I before, it's super fast. And the second other package in here we're gonna be using is called the Notion client. So the client in here is actually the one that interacts with the Notion API. Scrucy actually like exports how Notion API interacts and all those stuff. So you just need to like, of course, we all know that Notion API is, is free for, for like the personal use and those kind of stuff. So you can use it in this particular way. And all you need to do is actually just provide the collection ID, which is the page ID uh, that you want to. And, and that is it. That's, that's all you need to do. And the actual template you're going to be using today has everything in here. So we don't need to go do this or like, we don't need to go like to initialize this and create all that code. It's nothing like that, but of course you can customize it of however you want. And this is where it shines up. And this is like where, um, basically it's like very advanced and really, really good for us as developers to put our portfolios or maybe blogs like using notion. All right, pretty good. Enough theoretical stuff. Let's jump into the practical stuff and let's go ahead and start like by cloning the repository we've got here and let's go ahead and start with this, of course. So we need to go code in here, for example, just copy the code in here just to simply clone what we've got and you need a simple terminal. I've already did that, so I did like git clone and it cloned this into like a Notion portfolio folder. And um, yeah, so we just go to the S CD into that folder, open up code or VS code and done, done, done. So that's pretty much it. So I'll screw this in here. This is what you're gonna be like being put at after just getting into VS Code in here. And this is what you're actually going to see. So maybe I can zoom in the view for you guys so you can clearly see what is what is going on behind the scenes in here. So um, there's a lot of stuff that is going on in here. And as I said before, this one uses Next.js. So everything that you know about Next.js, everything that can work on Next.js, this can work on it as well because this template is based on Next.js and everything. So it has a couple of pages in here to handle everything on the Notion stuff. For example, there's the page ID in here which handles all Notion pages and it render a Notion page. And there's this Notion page components that is created for us by like the components in here. So everything is put in the template, of course. Uh, you don't need to worry about a lot of stuff because it supports dark theme, it supports so many things. So all good behind the scenes in here. And so because we want to run this one, so let's go ahead and run or actually install the dependencies we've got. So I'm going to use yarn because this one uses yarn.lock. So I'm going to use yarn install. And this will install all the dependencies from React, from the Notion API, um, the client, all those sort of stuff that we're going to be needing. So the installation is going to take a couple of seconds and, and all, everything is going to be good to go. Now to run the actual application in development mode or build it. So I'm going to start with development mode just to see the website and how it looks and what we've got and you know do development on it so i'm gonna do yarn dev and this will probably just go ahead and like open up a dev remote server on port 3000 and it's gonna run like the next js uh, webpack 5 build process so um yeah this should be real quick one it should like start this one as you see compile successfully so you can jump back to our browser right over here and it can do localhost 3000 and we should be able to like see what the website, of course. So it's gonna take a little bit of time and you're gonna notice some kind of lag and, and, and you know, just, you're gonna notice it to be very slow in development, particularly in development, and this only for development. Uh, it's gonna be slow because it, it's gonna need to like, go ahead and fetch the data from Notion about every single page, every single time you change the page or go to a different page or reload or any of that, that kind of stuff. So once you build it and put it into a website and do static site generation, everything is going to be like statically generated for you. Like HTML file is going to be generated. The JSON is going to be generated and everything that you need. So it's going to be super fast when you put it in a website. And believe me, it's, it's going to be just like blazingly fast. You won't be even believe that you're, you're going through like a website anymore. Just like 
uh, a mobile application, which is something that doesn't really need any kind of API or, or network connection to get all the data. Um, so this is what the website looks like. Hallelujah, it looks pretty awesome. It has dark theme already enabled. Um, let's go for the like the, the white kind of stuff in here. And it has so many things, clearly seeing like blog posts in here. And all of those are pages. Clearly it has some GIFs in here going on. So this looks awesome as well. Uh, images are being put from Notion. So if we take a look on Notion, we're gonna be seeing this particular template or this particular page like put on Notion and has been exported and put right over here. It's, it's like unbelievable. So if we go back to my Notion, I've actually extracted this template in here. And this is this is just like a clone of it or a copy of it. So clearly see, this is what it looks like. And this is what we've got as a rendering. So this is a very promising thing. And as you can see in here, this guy is actually using Notion as a backend. He's, he's not even trying to use another custom CMS. He's not even paying for a CMS. Everything is totally free using the Notion as a CMS and using Netlify and we're gonna be using all of this kind of stuff. That's that's pretty awesome. So let's try to go ahead and like change this page into our own Notion page and more particularly to our, our own notion made portfolio. So I made this really simple, minimal portfolio. So I would expect you to have a little bit more robust, more, but more complicated and has more info kind of portfolio. Mine is just like for demonstration purposes and just like for the video tutorial. Of course, you can go and inspire anything from it. You can duplicate it. You can do whatever you want to do with it. Uh, I'm going to find the link in the description below, but this is the portfolio I want to show in my website. This is the my portfolio and this is the page. So I tried to create like just a quick recommender kind of thing is whenever you have in your notion exclusive, my notion has all sorts of stuff from YouTube, from business work and all that sort of stuff. But for you, if you want to like put this website, I would really advise you just going and create a, a completely separate notion kind of like, you know, account and everything that would be a much better just to put it together. But if you don't want to, you can just go and create a page that's called, for example, portfolio website, something like that. And you can put any pages inside of it. For example, this is the page I'm going to be using as my landing page. And of course, this page, this kind of notion page has other pages that are leading to other different stuff. So for example, there's this food delivery app design. So you click on it, it takes you to a different uh, kind of page that explains all those sort of stuff about this uh, projects I made. Maybe, uh, maybe you've got like, I don't know, something uh, like this, for example, this is YouTube tutorials it takes you to another kind of page or a link in here. And there's so many things, maybe there's a blog post and you click on it, it takes you to this blog post in here of like the art behind react and all that sort of stuff. So all of those are like nested pages. Now, for, to make this notion to work with the, like the next JS notion template and put it inside of a website, you need to choose like the landing page or the root page where like the website is going to be like start you know, toggling everything. So this will be like a workspace. And the first page you're going to choose as a landing page is going to be like the parent page where, you know, it's going to be like the landing page like this one, and any other page that is inside of that, for example, any other page like this one is going to be like a nested the child page is going to be a route inside of like notion. So this is like the notion or basically how it works and how you should do it. You choose the first landing page that is going to act as your root page or parent page and any other nested page inside of that root page is going to be acting as an other route or a separate page uh, from, from that. So that's how you build your website. It's like a nested kind of diagram or nested architecture to put it all together. So enough talking, let's go ahead and jump to that. So how can you integrate this web page? First, to make sure you put the share button in here, make sure share to web is actually enabled. And this will allow you to share it. And you know, you have like a unique kind of um, like in here websites or a link for it to anyone can access this one and duplicate it and check it or whatever. So you share this one, you copy the link in here, you're gonna see something special about it. So if I go ahead and put the link in here, it's good to see there is, I'm not sure if you can see that, but there is this, this this kind of um, last ID in here, this is all you need to do. So you need this particular ID or unique identifier for this particular page. So you just copy the last one in here after the dash. So you copy this last portion in here, uh, you control C it and you go back to the projects. Now, if you go back to the projects, I'm gonna go to site.config.js. So this is where the configuration goes for our websites. Screw so in here, there's root notion page ID. And this is like watch the page ID of your root web page that you want to use. And this is like the notion page that we have just copied. So just paste this one in here. This is the ID that you need. 
that's all. Uh, maybe you've got like space ID. I'm not going to be going through all of that. You don't need it. And here you can change all the details about the website. For example, you can change the name of the website in here. Uh, maybe portfolio. And you can change the domain. Maybe it's going to be like snapmapboot.io uh, or something like or .dev. And the author in here. Um, maybe you've got a diff description. So uh, elegance portfolio, something like that, whatever. And uh, the social media or social image title. I don't know. It's um, maybe but and aka coder one, something of that sort. Okay, so you can do all that and you can manage the Twitter or GitHub or LinkedIn in here. So you can change those too. maybe the Twitter you want to put like um, my Pinus in here, and where's my GitHub handle, and maybe LinkedIn in here. So it's called like, I guess it's the map. I don't know if I remember right. So you put all of together, there's also other stuff that you might want to care about, maybe you want to like over the page URLs and those sort of stuff. It doesn't matter for us right now. So what mirrors we change this page ID and we're good to go. So if you go back to our website in here, we need to go to refresh because it has been built and everything. So it looks pretty good right now. Uh, because we got that built and everything. So as you see, it takes a little bit of time. We got hi, I'm Islam. This is the title that we've put right here. This is what's actually taking care uh, on the title of the web page. And hallelujah, we got our actual Notion page right into the website. And this looks absolutely amazing. Look at it. Just it's just so good. Uh, you got the title in here. You can change it as well. You got the image we've put in here as well. Um, the image is being loaded from Notion. It's crazy if I do open the image in a new tab, this is all being put and actually handled or stirred from the Notion CDN uh, of the images. So you, you don't really need to care or like worry about any of that other store stuff because Notion is going to handle everything for you behind the scenes. All you need to do is just write stuff on Notion and get the ID and you put that ID in, and there you go. That's it. And any change you're going to be putting in here, it's going to be reflecting right here, but it's going to only reflect once you deploy it on an actual web hosting and everything It's going to only reflect if you rebuild the projects, because this project or this template in here uses static site generation. Now, what I mean by static site generation, let me go in and explain that a little bit in details. So the static site generation screws in here in Next.js, there is this function called get static props. And as we all know, Next.js is kind of like a static site generator or a server side rendering framework for React or maybe a client side, but this is mainly why it's used for. So let's take it side of the server or the static site generation. So it offers this particular function. This one gets you the props on the build time. And what I mean by the build time is actually when you are building your React application, when you're generating the HTML and the bundles and everything, this is when it is actually being going to be called. So what's going to happen in here is you see we actually redirecting or basically doing a resolve notion page. So we're going through the notion pages of our, you know, the page of we've put like the root page, we get the data from the notion API, and we store it in JSON. That's the only way we are actually receiving data. So later on, all the data is going to be put inside of JSONs and everything is going to be resolved from that JSON. It's not going to handle it's not going to do any API calls. Once you build it and deploy it into an actual, uh, maybe a Netfly or Versal or any other websites or you know, kind of hosting. So that's, that's what happens actually as well. So for the static path as well, this handles routing and all the sort of stuff. So this is what the notion page looks like. So it looks absolutely adorable. And this is what happens. So you need to know about that and put that in consideration that if you change the content of your portfolio, make sure to rebuild that, or maybe a content of your blog, make sure to rebuild that too. So for example, if I do any change right here, maybe if I if I go ahead and remove this one, this particular emoji in here, and I go back in here, like refresh, it's going to take a couple of like seconds because it's going to revalidate the cache and it's going to refresh, like grab everything from the API again. So you see, there's no emoji anymore in here because that has been done. But this is only in developments because in developments, it goes in real time and fetches the data from the API. But when you put it in the production base and your websites, it's only going to take care of like the JSON that already fetch it during the build time, but it's not going to interact with the API in real time or whatsoever. So I'm going to grab back in this one. And that's all we have forgotten here. All right, that's looking pretty awesome. So let's go in and test this one and see how the website works. For example, we've got a different pages in here, I links. Um, if you take a look in those, 
So we got like the food delivery design, maybe this one. This one takes you to an actual web page, clearly with like details, with images and, and everything around it. So let's see if that does the same thing. So we click on it. It's going to take a couple of seconds because it's in development and it's going to take us into there. It's going to be putting the image what we've got in here. So that's pretty good. You can change the cover image as well. Um, maybe so we can do that as well. Maybe maybe that will be looking good. Uh, maybe change it to the planet Earth kind of thingy. Uh, that will look good, maybe. So refresh this one and see what it does. And excuse me, just a quick one about the slugs in here or the route. Excuse me, you see this ID now added, but in production, you're not going to be seeing this. You're going to be just like seeing it like this, like the slugified version. And this is really well for the SEO purposes. So it's going to work really, really good. Um, so excuse me, the image has been changed in here. We got the images, we got the text really well, uh, the footer in here, you can you can manage those kind of stuff from the code, like the footer and you know the social medias, but the social media since we have changed them so you click on this is going to take us to like, for example, my GitHub page in here, which looks absolutely great. And yeah, it's it's really, really well made up. And you got all of those, maybe the search bar in here, you're going to find the notion search bar in here, you can tweak a little bit this in the code as well. Uh, you can go back in here. Yep wait a couple of seconds as well before you can you can tell that it's it's actually loaded and everything um and there you go so this is going back to the the actual page and everything what i also like doing in here is actually including some blog posts so this is just like a recommended thing and the blog post would work so for example there's this art the art behind react blog post uh, it takes us to that page the text is really made up it looks really good we got the titles uh, maybe you got the the kind of uh, the anchor links in here for it so if you copy this one and share it with somebody else it's going to be just taking it right into that section hyperlink there is um security gifts in here and those are put in notion indeed which makes it even far more better so from Notion, you can handle whatever you want. Plus, Notion has this kind of template. Notion it has plugins, all this kind of stuff. So it makes it absolutely adorable. Let's take a look on this. Um, you're gonna just like, yeah, that's that's basically a Notion, and that's exactly what we're seeing in here. Uh, the code in here is looking good as well. Absolutely great. And last but not least, there's the dark mode in here, which is enabled as well, and it looks absolutely awesome as well. Screw see uh, text. There is the text taking effects with the dark mode. Um, like GIFs in here and emojis. Um, they got the code snippet in here and it uses Prism.js just to highlight or do the code highlighting and everything. It's absolutely adorable. All right, now it's actually we need to take this website from our local host and deploy it into an actual website. And we're gonna see how performant it is and we're gonna see all the steps, what we're gonna do with to make sure that works and how we trigger the rebuild, how we do like CI, CD, and those all this kind of stuff. So it's gonna look absolutely amazing. So I've got to need to do like a small change. Can you see there's a Vavicon in here, uh, which is the icon of the website that shows up on the top. So we want to change this one. So I can just go in and do a small change to make this work. I've already copied my you know custom Vavicons in here for my like portfolio because it's a portfolio. So you want your picture or something of that sort just going in there. So that's what that's what I put in here. Now I need to go ahead and change that inside of the document. So this file is going to handle everything or like the bare minimum HTML documents in Next.js. So I'm going to change those. For example, this one is already working. I don't I don't have this 96 pixels. So I'm going to get rid of it. And I'm going to add another one that is for um, it's called 190 192 192 by 192. All right, and 192 in here, 192 there, and that should look absolutely amazing. Okay, and that should that should change the Vavicons uh, for our for our website in here. It's not going to reflect immediately because there's actually a cache thing and everything. But once we deploy it in Netfly, uh, we're going to be able to like see the changes in, on the new website. All right, pretty awesome. Now it's actually the time come to actually put that inside of a Netfly and like deploy into Netfly. I'm going to use CI CD as well. We're going to be also doing some, you know, GitHub integration, and all this kind of stuff. And we're going to see how to trigger the build process if you ever change your profiles and everything. So let's go ahead and try to take this from the local host dev, take this website and put it into a production ready website. 
and see how he goes. So first things first, we need to create a new GitHub repository because native line here integrate really, really well with, with GitHub. And in order to be able to do like, you know, uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment or CI CD, we need to push that to GitHub and integrate GitHub or GitHub repository with Netify. So I'm going to go and create a new repository right here. I'm going to do repo name in here. For example, uh, I'm going to do notion portfolio and I'm going to like create um, notion next JS portfolio. Okay. That would be a little bit much more precise. So notion next JS uh, portfolio using notion as a, a CMS or a constant management system. This must be public, of course. Um, I think you can use private. Yeah, you can use private, but I want to put this public for you guys to be able to see it. So I'm going to create a new repo. And um, yep, I'm going to copy this one, I'm going to go back into our project. So the projects in here, and this is where the match is going to happen, of course. So I'm going to open up a new um, terminal in here, and we need to initialize, I think, it already has a GitHub as curiously already has a git kind of repo into it. So I think I need to go in and like remove that git repo. So I can do um, so remove RF and dot git, this will basically remove all the GitHub stuff and everything. And I'm going to reinitialize this repository to a, to a brand new one. So I'm going to do git init. And this will initialize a new empty repository. I think it has a git ignore. So we're, we're actually in a good part. I'm going to do git add to add all the files. And I'm going to do git commit initial portfolio commit. All right. And that looks good. And that's what we've committed. So curious if take a look on the commits that we've made. That was actually the first commit into the master. It's actually initial portfolio and it has all the changes we've got. So that looks absolutely amazing. All right, that's pretty good. Now, how can we do that or push that changes? So let's first go ahead and put the repository that we've just created as in remote origin. So to do that, I'm going to do git and going to do remote dash V to view the remote origins. There is no remote origins. And I'm going to do remote and origin. I'm going to name this an origin. I'm going to put this between a back text in here or just like quotes and add that origin. Now if we do git remote dash V for view, and we're going to view the origin. So we've got the origin for fetch and push are the same ones in here. And just specifying the origin in here, this will allow us to push the code from our, you know, local machine to GitHub. So this is just a classic one. That's why I went through this a little bit quickly. So you could you could because you already know that so maybe you're using like a GraphQL user interface or another kind of software that does that for you that would be much better. Maybe you can use the GitHub or the VS code stuff. So I prefer the CLI for the Git, uh, for the Git stuff. So that would be a little bit more robust for you. All right, pretty sweet. We got GitHub, we got like changes in here. Now let's go and push the changes into our GitHub repository. So I'm going to do Git push and I'm going to do origin and I'm going to do master. So I specify the origin and specify the branch that you want to like push, which are master by default and origin by default, since we have named it origin. And um, yeah, so we need just to wait a couple of seconds for the code to get into the, the GitHub servers, and we'll be good to go. So there you go. We got that master to master. If I go back in here, refresh real quickly, and hallelujah. So we got our file in here, and um, yeah, so we got the readme and everything. So you can get rid of all of those because this is a template and everything. Uh, so you might not need that, but there you go. So this is actually our projects and everything. This looks good. Now the thing is, we need to go ahead and tell Netlify. So this is our repository. So please go ahead and import the code into you know Netlify and do CI/CD. So I'm going to do import an existing project uh, from the new side in there. So I'll, let me just show you that again. Um, so you can clearly see that I think. So Netlify, go back to add new site. Uh, you can do start from a template or deploy manually. You can use the the Netlify kind of CLI, but I would rather use the GitHub kind of integration because it's the easiest and, and the simplest and everyone uses GitHub and know how to use GitHub. So you got the point. Uh, I'm going to do important existing projects, I'm going to go to GitHub in right over there. And this has been uh, already authorized for us. So I got a plenty of repos in my GitHub. So I'm going to choose. Um, so what was that name? I think notion portfolio, something of that or maybe next. JS portfolio. 
Um, going to search. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of time. So new no repositories. I'm going to just search Notion and see um, if that is actually inside of there. So there you go. So we got Notion, Next.js, por Portfolio. Okay, I, I actually misspelled Portfolio. Sorry for that. I was trying to change the name of, of that repo. I don't know. Uh, can I change the name of a repo, please? I don't think you would be able to do that. So, so let's just go with it right now and see how it goes. All right. So I'm going to choose this repo. I'm going to do, this is the owner, uh, just leave it by default. And the master branch is our default branch. So leave it by default as well. The base directory is going to be the regular base directory. Uh, the published directory is going to be dot next. And this is because this one uses Scrucy seems like this is a Next.js site to enable key features. Next.js when it fly, we will automatically install the essential Next.js build plugin. So it's actually really good for Netlify side that it detects automatically that we are using the Next.js kind of framework and the template is based on Next.js. So it knows that automatically it's going to install plugins for us and it put the actual published directory automatically for us. So if you have something different than that, we're using a different one, make sure to put the published directory at .next because this is where next is going to publish or build the files and the command we're going to be building with is actually the yarn build. So you can double check that by going to peg.json. We got the build. So it uses next build in here. So, so you can use yarn build as well in here and maybe show advanced stuff. You can put, you know, verm variables and those kind of stuff or the, the functions, but you don't need to care about any of that. So you're good parts and you can go in and do like deploy sites and see how we go. So this one will start actually deploying the sites. Now, Netflight will actually put the CDN together, try to initialize and everything is going to set up a domain. It's going to put HTTPS. So the first one in here is actually going to build your project. So you take a look on the logs. Um, it's clear to see the build start ready and it's going to start building. And, and actually, if we take a look on the build, what it's going to do is going to go into actually Notion. So if you take a look on Notion right here, uh, if you take a look into the previous one. So it's going to try to do request to the Notion, like, you know, API and everything. And it's going to grab all the data needed. So it's going to grab the images, everything. Like it's going to interact with the API. It's going to get the data regarding the page that we, we chose to use, like the root web page. And it's going to put it right over there. And this is a really amazing one. So it's going to put everything inside of that. Um, I think this is already done because it, it made it real quick. So um, let's see how it goes. And right over here is going to start the Next.js build. So after it installs all the plugins and dependencies and everything, uh, right over here is going to like start the, the Netfly build or basically the Next.js build is going to build everything together into a particular folder. So that would be, uh, that would be really good. It actually just wait a couple of seconds for it to work. Yay, the build has finished and we got everything successfully built um, like between Next.js and the Netfly and everything. And as you see here, if we take a look on those, it's actually going to build like the bundle first and it's going to like afterwards, it's going to do like um, the on build and everything. So all of those going to like generate the route. So this is actually Next.js stuff and this is where the static site generations comes into place. So it detects every single page and you put it in a JSON and everything. For example, there's Hi Islam, this is the landing page. Uh, this is the first page. There is uh, the Apple AirPods Mac React animation. Uh, this is the other page, whatever you got. So you got the full delivery app design as well. And you got the revalidate in here. So the revalidation basically means like the number of seconds it needs to refetch that page and everything. But for us, it should be all good. And you can just trigger the rebuild to detect the new changes that you put inside of like notion for it to take effect or reflect on the actual website data and if you take a quick look in here there's all those uh, kind of JSONs. you put the routes manifest json the build manifest json so it extracts all the data it does static site ge rendering or generation and it gets all that data from notion it puts it inside of json's and it store it in the in the server so later on when a user tries to goes into our website it doesn't go and interact with the actual notion api anymore because it has that saved inside of like JSONs and he knows that there's no changes to rebuild those JSONs. So all it does is just serves this JSONs alongside the HTML that has been generated as well in the build time. So it goes really, really fast. It's going to be really good. And it's clearly everything is done in here. So yeah, let's go ahead and see how that does. If we click on the preview, I'm going to see how that goes. Curious in here. 
so immediately just going into the website, it runs on Netlify and everything. It's so fast. The images loaded so fast. We got that. It's, it's actually really, really fast. Um, so that's our first load. And as you in here, it went really, really well. So everything went really well. So let's try to go to a web page, for example. Uh, maybe go to this one. So just a click, a single button click, and it just straight through takes you to the web page and you can read through. So go back in here. It's going to take you back. No waiting time. It's not like dev when you click and wait a couple seconds. Nothing of that. Um, you can you can do all sorts of stuff. Maybe you want to click to go to YouTube channel in here that goes to like code one. Yeah, you can do that too. Uh, images are loading testimonials and the blog post and you click on it immediately takes you to the blog post the gifts in their code, dark mode. I mean, that's really well. And, and if you just like take a look on the video, it's really, really quick just to deploy and put that together in Netfly. Now, the last thing you might want to do, like the last step that you would love to do to make yourself into like the last professional kind of grade is to buy in a new domain. Maybe you want to like put a domain, like for example, Islam, um, would dot dev. And this is it's going to be like a professional domain that experience or puts you in, in like a portfolio. And more importantly, you can go in and customize this however you want. It's out of notion just to make it look absolutely adorable. So you can change whatever um, from Twitter in here, you can add a couple of like, um, this is me love content creation on YouTube or whatever. And you can you can edit whatever. So for example, you can do whatever you want on notion, and you can export or use template as well for like the notion X system to make you know, the best out of it to make you the best portfolio out of it. Now, for example, if we like add this change right over here, of course, this is a build, you know, it's like a static site generated, but we've got the next JS new feature, which is called like incremental static site generation, which is enabled by default on our template in here. So take a look. So how do you know if it's enabled, you got this revalidate. So the revalidate means the number of the seconds that this page will actually like, you know, rebuild or like, like automatically incrementally kind of rebuild by itself on the server with no interaction from you when like this page is request requested and it's not going to rebuild the whole websites. And this is the awesome part of it. It's going to only rebuild the page that you actually think there is a change on and you request it and it knows there is a change on. It's going to like rebuild that after 10 seconds of those change. It's just so good. Of course, I would rather choose a like a higher kind of number in here, maybe a hundred, maybe a thousand, uh, just to make the site a little bit more stable and everything. I don't want to rebuild every single 10 seconds, but a thousand or something like that. If you do a lot of changes, you can rebuild every 10 seconds or something, but that would be just such a really good. So if you take a look into our stuff in here, it's crazy. There's no change any like yet, but if we go to refresh, there you go, because there's 10 seconds elapsed from the last time I changed in there. And the change is going to come through right here. So you don't need to do anything other than just that because of the incremental kind of static site generation or regeneration. Um, of course, to force a manual rebuild and get all the data from the actual notion and everything without the incremental stuff, you can just go in and trigger a new kind of build. So maybe you can just go to like, we try deploy and deploy site again, or clear cache and deploy site. And it's going to like redeploy from scratch It's going to build from scratch, everything's going to happen from scratch. So you're going to have a completely brand new website with a fresh kind of changes from notion, everything is reflected in your website and everything is built from the ground up. And to take a final sneak peek into our portfolio that we've just deployed into Netfly, uh, we're going to see everything looking absolutely really well. So as clearly seen, you've got like, um, you know, the photo in here, the short bio, we've got the links that takes you down there. Uh, you know, this kind of what I can do or things I do the best, maybe back end development and UI UX, um, maybe the projects I've worked with or the tutorials I made, those kind of stuff. Uh, maybe like the shared tutorials I shared in here. That's really well as well, because, you know, that's what we have in, in our like notion stuff in there. So that should show up. Um, and, and just a quick thing in here, if you don't have everything, you make sure that have everything inside of the page scope, because if you're referencing something from outside, notion won't be able to like get it because of permission stuff and everything. So make sure to reference anything that you're basically referencing inside of your, like 
your portfolio landing page or anything, make sure to put it inside of the main Roots Co page that you use its actual ID uh, on, on the Roots Co ID. So make sure to use everything. If you go back inside of this particular, make sure this is the parent of everything that you include inside of that landing page or something for it to work properly and be able to, you know, get the permissions right and get it right. So um, yeah, so that hallelujah it looks pretty well, maybe, maybe like more about me in here. Uh, you can get it right over there, uh, testimonials, we got it, uh, blog posts and everything. And, and it's crazy, the blog is pretty fast and you can immediately go and read through those and you can immediately go back and forth between all of those. So that looks pretty well, uh, maybe dark mode as well. We are all lovers of dark mode. But I really, really hope you guys enjoy this one. So you're gonna find the template down in the description below. You can like, you know, uh, you can go in and like, clone it or duplicate it and edit it however you want to play around with it with this really, really awesome template. I really advise you if you go like want to go professional to go ahead and edit this template. It's really small and teeny tiny template. It looks really good. But of course, it might need sometimes some kind of like small teeny tiny touches to make it look perfect, especially for your case. And you want to like shine up because you want to make things that look absolutely kind of like perfect and unique among others. So you probably want to do that as well. So anyway, guys, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys actually like this portfolio. Hope you guys like the idea of using Notion as a cost management system or as a backend system and linking it to an actual website and deploying it to NetFly and maybe later on add your own domain. Why not? So thank you guys for watching. Really hope you guys enjoyed and catch you all hopefully in another really shiny, awesome kind of crazy idea with you guys. So catch you hopefully in the next ones.